Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geekylemic Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. Where in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use UI scroll views within the Swift language. Now, on the OS Simulator here, I'm an example of what we're going to be creating today. You can see it's a pretty blank screen with a label in the middle. Now, the only reason the label's there is to indicate that we are actually using our scroll view. So, you can't see it at the moment, but once we start swiping up and down, you can see the um, label starts to move as we are now interacting with our scroll view. And on the right hand side of the view, you can see that we have now an indicator telling us how far we've scrolled and how far we've got basically left to go. And this is all within the Swift language. So already in my project set up, it's a simple single view application for the iPhone and I've simply named it scrolling in Swift for the purpose of this tutorial. Now, it can be a little bit difficult trying to um, create scroll views in applications where you're trying to use one view for every screen size. And what I'm going to do is show you how to do it correctly. So in our main Dutch storyboard, I'm going to simply resize this view now uh, to a bit smaller and then we're ready to go. Okay, so if you are using like this method now, like one view for all screen sizes, uh, scroll views don't really react to it very well. You need to create and place it within a content view. Now you may think we know we don't really have anything called a content view in our objects and you yeah you are correct. So what we simply need to do then is get a substandard view which we're going to pretend it's a content view or call it the content view. So we're placing a view within our view and then we're going to get some constraints and we're going to pin it completely around. Now the reason we're going to do this is because when the screen size changes, uh, depending on what device we're on, that content view will resize itself to the view. And then we're going to get our scroll view and we're going to place our scroll view within this content view. So like I said before, once that view, our content view starts resizing, our scroll view will stick to that rather than to the overall view, which can kind of mess up. And then all we need to do then is then add the missing constraints on our scroll view. And then it's all kind of set up. And to give us a brilliant indication that we are actually scrolling, I'm going to place our label in here. I'll put it in the center. And again, we add some missing constraints on top of that also. So that's center to our scroll view. And once we start scrolling, we'll see our label moving up and down, indicating that the scroll view is actually working. Okay, then. so now we've done that, we need to add an outlet for um, our scroller. So I'm going to space out this section here. I'm going to bring up the assistant editor. And I'm going to make sure, instead of clicking from here, I'm going to make sure I'm selected on the scroll view here, just in case it does pick up the content view. I'm going to right um, click and drag it over, and I'll simply name it Scroller, nice and simple. And then once we've done that, we can simply close the assistant editor and then jump into our view controller.swift. Okay then. Now there's two things we need to configure when we're creating these scroll views. The first thing we need to do is kind of create a function for the auto kind of layout subviews. Now the reason we do this is because we need to set up our scroll view so it works no matter what happens. And then after we can then place our scroll view settings within uh, either a button um, or even in the view did load which is what we're going to do now to basically run our scroll view. Okay so we're going to create our function statement now which is uh, view will layout subviews. There we go. And from within it, we do super um, dot uh, view um, will layout subviews. There we go. Uh, we set that up like we do in our super view did load there. And then we need to do self dot scroller dot frame because we're now setting up the um, configuration to then simply space equals space self dot view dot bounds and then we go to right again self dot scroller dot content size there we go dot height so then equal we're going to have it scroll up to 400 pixels in height which I presume is a pretty uh, good enough example and if I copy and paste that and just change the height to uh, width and we're going to have this to zero 
as we don't want it to scroll left or right at all. We only want it to scroll up and down. So we've kind of configured it and how we want it to set up, but we need to kick it into action. So then what we need to do then within our view did load, as we want it to happen when the view loads, we want it to be always, always working. We get our scroller dot content insets and we want that to equal our UI edge insets make. There we go. And we're going to get to be zero at the top, zero on the left. On the bottom, we're going to have 400 because we want it to go downwards 400. And then on the right, we set that to zero also. And then we end that with our parentheses. So we will configure now our um, scroll view is all set up and it's ready to go. So make sure you select it on the iPhone simulator and go to build and run. So once it's built and run and loaded on the simulator, we have our label in the middle. We can't scroll left to right as we didn't set it to do that. We set it to scroll 400 pixels downwards. So as we scroll, our label moves because it's placed on within it. And you can see on the right there that the scroll view is actually currently working. So yeah, this is simply how you create scroll views within the Swift language and give them the ability to work on all different screen sizes. So scroll views, again, they are brilliant because they can extend your screen's view and you can add more and more content onto it. It's a brilliant, brilliant feature to have in your applications. So I hope this helps in your apps or projects at the moment and I'd like to thank you all for watching. Hey guys, just before we click off this video, I have a few more bits of information that I'd love to share with you. But just before I do, if this tutorial helped you in any way, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description below. If you want more on-to-date and in-depth tutorials on iOS 8, Xcode 6 and the Swift language, then make sure you guys enroll in our complete iOS 8 and Xcode 6 course. The links will be in the description below. And if you guys want to learn on the go, make sure you download our Xcode tutorial application from the App Store where you can get much more than what we offer on YouTube. Again, links for this will be in the description below. And if you guys want to kick back and blow off a bit of steam, make sure you go check out my gaming channel where we have a lot of fun, play with a lot of friends and generally just have a good time. So make sure again you go subscribe to that channel. But once more, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.